This is a knife that I never saw coming. Now, what you're looking at today, aside from the very loud Kydex noises, is the Work Tough Gear or WTG Ninjuko. I think that's the way to say it. That's how I'm gonna be saying it in this video in particular. And what the heck is a Ninjuko? It is something that I had no clue even existed and I actually kind of love it the more that I use it, the more that I have it and play around with it. It is just a really weird out there, but kind of sensical knife. And so what the heck is this thing? So starting off, the Ninjuko is a knife designed by Joe Flowers, who I'm sure most of us are familiar with, at least on the bushcrafting side. He has helped design many knives for Condor and usually makes knives that are, you know, bushcraft, survival, wilderness oriented. But this knife is a little bit of a stray from that way. And what the Ninjuko essentially seeks to be is a kind of self-defense slash everyday carry or, you know, more urban carried version of a wilderness blade blending a lot of the good things about a puko styled knife with a little bit more urban tactical knife so that is how the ninjuko came to be and as we go over this knife you'll probably see more of that puko styling taking place so first off like i said um this thing is puko designed or inspired and you can tell partly with this handle especially with this lower portion or back portion of the handle where it kind of curves upward to really lock your hand in to that handle very puko-esque including that thick kind of um, almost homogenous handle that can be held in many different grips. Very, very Puko-esque. And that is uh, generally a plus. In addition to that too, another carryover from the Puko wilderness styled blades is this grind. This is it might have a very small degree of, you know, micro bevel, but for the most part, this is a zero degree grind. So what that means is it comes straight from the, the grind line down to that cutting edge without any real prominent bevel. So what I mean by this is most knives, like say, take this Protec for instance, you know, it has its grind and then you see a very prominent bevel right here that leads to the very cutting edge. Well, with this knife, it does not have that. It just is a zero grind. So once again, that's something that you would see on a Puko styled blade. And that is a carryover to this more urban EDC styled knife. The last main carryover that you see in this blade that is more, I guess you would say bushcraft or survival focused is a sharpened spine. Believe it or not, this blade is or has a very, very sharp spine that could easily scrape or strike ferro rods to start fires. So not necessarily sure how applicable that would be to urban, you know, EDC, but it is there, it does exist. And once again, I think that is more a kind of, you know, carryover or homage to, you know, the wilderness styling of this blade. Now with those things out of the way, what makes this um, more of an EDC style blade is one, it's kind of overall shape and size. It is a little bit smaller than something like the BRK Bushcrafter or you know more of your traditional wilderness knives and that that combined with the fact of its kind of design aesthetics where you see this very large almost fuller styled uh, kind of relief cut in the center of the blade. I think that is done more for um, lightning because this is a very, very light blade, but that is not something that you would necessarily expect or want on a wilderness blade. In addition, it does also have an upper swedge, so it's kind of hard to see exactly here, but you can see with this relief uh, on the back here, this whole portion of the spine is all kind of a swedge. So once again, something you wouldn't necessarily want on a wilderness blade because it makes the spine thinner but it does exist on this blade probably once again for the kind of tactical aesthetics and weight savings that removing stock comes with then the other thing that um, 
or the other couple of things that lend this thing more towards being a you know uh, EDC blade is its thinner thickness. This is around an eighth of an inch thick. So it's a little bit on the thin side for a wilderness or outdoor knife, um, at least typically speaking. And then finally, it is made in uh, N690CO stainless steel, which isn't necessarily a horrible um, blade, blade steel for wilderness applications, but the edge retention is not something that I would necessarily want, especially with the trade-off of, you know, like you get a lot less edge retention, but you do get better corrosion resistance. Isn't a horrible trade-off, but I would still rather take something like CPM 3V if I was going after a wilderness blade. But for an urban EDC styled knife, I think N690CO is a perfectly fine and acceptable choice of steel for this blade in its given application. So overall, what do I think of this little guy? I think it is a really fun knife. I think it's really cool, one, to see Joe Flowers, you know, trying something different, something that's wacky, a little bit out there. But also, two, I think it's a really cool, almost kind of um, case study, if you will, or, you know, just design element to the fact or to attest to the point that, you know, um, when it comes down to it, you can take wilderness elements, things like, you know, a zero degree, you know, Scandinavian style, grind or a puko styled handle um, and blend those elements into making a very useful everyday carry um, or urban knife as opposed to a wilderness blade. So I think it's really cool that Joe Flowers kind of branched out and made this style of knife that is, you know, definitely atypical, but still very cool. And once again, still carries a lot of heritage of something that you would expect Joe Flowers to make. So while I wasn't expecting to see this knife ever, it is really cool that it exists. And it's a really neat blade. And most of all too, being that it is a work tough gear blade, it's also pretty darn affordable. I wanna say these things are about 80 to $70. So it's a pretty reasonably priced blade, especially if you're looking for something a little bit more different and a little bit more unique when it comes to EDC styled knives. Anyways guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.